Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our focus now moves to Ogun State, where there seems to be crisis brewing in a, in a Oloke Meiji community, uh, where farmers and herders seem to once again be at loggerheads after, um, of course, uh, uh, an indigen of the community was killed. Some cows apparently also died as a result of a farm being poisoned and, you know, others. Uh, we're speaking this morning with uh, Mr. Mohamed Abubakar, the Secretary of Makban in Ogun State. Good morning and thanks for joining us, Mr. Abubakar. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. All right, we hope that uh, we'll have a good enough network to have this conversation. But quickly, fill us up, uh, fill us in with um, um, what exactly has taken place in Ogun State in the last uh, couple of days. Uh, there's reports that uh, um, uh, indigents of the community are fleeing for their safety. What seems to be going on? Uh, yes, what happens was that uh, a man was killed at a village. Uh, and uh, there are some uh, planning pastor families from the riverside in the state. So when they came, when they were passing through the village, the villains started shooting at them and killed several cows. So uh, we informed the... Mr. Wubaka, can you hear us? Mr. Wubaka. Mr. Wubaka, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, all right, we'll try to reconnect with you. Yes, we're having issues hearing you clearly, so we'll try to reconnect with you. So he's basically, you know, kick-starting um, the conversation, talking about what exactly happened, but we'll try to get back because that network quality isn't perfect at all. So we, we do need to get to the bottom of this matter, find out what exactly is happening. If we're having cases where farmers are poisoning their own land because herders are encroaching on it, then it's, there's a problem. There's something needs to be fixed. So, so and this if, is for me, is the wildest part is the fact that we are now in a, in a you know a place where people can decide, oh, you poison our cows, we're going to attack you people, attack your villages, attack your communities, without any fear that <laughs> they will be arrested, without any fear that this is breaking the law, that you shouldn't go take another person's life or destroy another person's property simply because you're angry that your cow had constipation. Um, good morning. <laughs> Mr. Bobaka, good morning once again. Yeah, it's a struggle this morning with the network. I'm not sure what's uh, going on. But um, as we try to reconnect with him, th that's for me is the wildest part. That, you know, people can decide oh, we're, we're, there's going to be reprisal attacks. And the conversation we're having this morning is about how government can create peace in the community and how we can find, you know, a, you know, a middle ground you know, and you know, try to calm nerves and all of that. You would go to jail. That should be the answer to killing anybody or destroying anyone's property. That should be the See, answer. How should we look at this? Should we look at it from the angle of all oh, the herds when you count their losses? Because in the first place, they did not poison your cows, according to the statement. That's why we have Mr. Um, Mohammed Abubakar, Secretary of the Madman, cows weren't poisoned, to, no. to explain their... No, the cows were not. If... The facts are right. Yeah. Their land was poisoned. They yeah. poisoned their farmland. Not the, they didn't give the cows something to eat and they died. They poisoned their own farmland. So anybody, even if it's a human being, who goes in there to steal something, then becomes a victim of whatever was done to the land. Yeah. So we will really see it that way and say, you know, we did not poison your cows. We poisoned our farmland. So if you come in, you bear the consequences of whatever it is. Or how else do we begin to look at this? Because... If we get to the point where, do you know what it, what it costs to farm and what, what the prices of foodstuff are saying in the market? If it has gotten to the point where the farmers have it up to their throats that they have to take such a drastic action to basically send a warning to herders not to encroach on their farm, then it just shows how bad the situation is. You cannot buy tomatoes to make a little pot of stew these days with all the money you have and you'll be comfortable. I mean, things are expensive. Very so expensive. if farmers are trying to make ends meet, you know, contribute to Nigeria's food, food security and all of that, and we're having issues, you know, cattle, basically destroying that and making a mess of those efforts, then 
I believe something So earlier we had spoken about the anti-open grazing law, you know, and how um, it should be in place in Ogun State. So in the first place, we shouldn't even be having this conversation if people exactly. have respected the, exactly. the anti-open so grazing law. If we're law. talking about open grazing being banned in a place like Ogun State, then in the first place, we can say that the herdsmen, you know, their action of encroaching on people's farmlands openly is illegal, truth or false? Is yes. that something we can all agree on? So why don't we begin to tackle the root causes of issues? You know, I believe that when southern governors meet today in Alaus Ikeja, these are the things they should be they should begin to talk about. Why is it so difficult to get farmers or to get to get protection for farmland? Do, do we do we need to now have every farmer build a fence? And put a gate on their farmland. I mean, how bad and does it need to get? To how, no, that's that's what we're saying. How bad does it need to get before we begin to get government intervention in cases like this? It's I, just unfortunate I, that somebody even had to die. I'll go back to you know realizing where we are as a country. The fact that there is even conversations of reprisal attacks, and ind indigents have to flee their communities for their safety because. There is a possibility that they will be attacked because a couple of cows had constipation, had diarrhea, um, um, after eating or encroaching on another person's farm and eating their crops. Um, there is no fear. There is no regard for the fact that that is unlawful. There's no fear that you will be arrested and you will be prosecuted for um, taking another person's life or for destroying another person's property. So we are at a place where these things are almost normal. And so what we need to do instead is find ways to, you know, create peace in the society, get, you know, the leaders of Magban, get the traditional rulers and community to all meet and, you know, negotiate, you know, and tell the, tell the you know, uh, the Katuveras not to attack. I can't believe that that's where we are <laughs> because it is, it is um, a, 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 a crime that should take you to jail. And so any person who is bold enough at this point to say, oh, they, you know, poisoned their, their, cut, their you know, crops and now my cows are sick and I'm going to attack their communities, shows that you don't have any fear of being arrested by the police. You, have, you don't have any fear of whatever the laws of yeah, the no land of Ogun State um, 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 are. <clears throat> it, it, I'm shocked that we, we still are here. So, yes, you know, you might bring up the anti-open grazing law and say, you know, how, how has this really been implemented? In other states, maybe, you know, you would not hear of these things anymore, but Ogun State maybe also needs to do better. But um, it, it takes you back to when we used to say, how many people have been arrested for the murder of indigents of communities across Nigeria? How many can you point to and say, oh, this person, we're going to make an example of this person, he's going to get 10, 15 years in jail for being a part of the raid that left 15 people dead in a community because of a, a farmer's headers clashes. We're going to send this person to jail for 20 years or for 12 years because cattle were rustled and they, they found out that they are cattle, cattle rustlers and they're causing chaos in the community. How many people would you point to in this whole conversation we've had in the last six years, 10 years, 20 years, that you can say, okay, this person is in jail now because of the crimes that they committed. And when you don't punish people for those crimes, it gives others the boldness to say that our cows now have constipation because they ate, because they first of all encroached on your land and ate your crops, so we're going to come back and attack this community. That's the boldness that it gives people for not punishing the, cr the crimes of, of, of exactly. you know, these Exactly, and people. that's why this has continued to fester, because how would, how would the education of millions of people in a, in a state be, be threatened such that schools are closed down people have to seek refuge elsewhere because of yeah. cattle when you reward when you reward criminal behavior wow. with silence and you ignore it it gives you know the rise to many many more of those criminals two weeks ago we spoke about the bandit who was boasting of killing um soldiers to the jeers um, of others people yes. laughed and, and, and till and, today and, and did nothing till today there hasn't been any response from the nigeria government to say oh we find that completely distasteful and that person will be found and apprehended and will be sent to, uh, to jail or we pro um, you know for his Buhari crimes there is no there's no we've not had that conversation so it almost feels like that person um i'm very sure that if we had that conversation with you know the nigerian government that there's going to be a person who would come out a shake maybe to defend that bandit and say well uh, well, you know, he's angry. You know, we need to find a way to give I them amnesty and some other, some other things like that. That's what you get when you reward such behavior. So instead of the Ogun state government to ensure and put his foot down and say that there will be no such reprisal attack in my state, and if you dare 
even think it, you will be sent to prison or you will be jailed and all your cows will be, will be confiscated or whatever it is. Instead of us to do that, we instead are having conversations on television talking about how we can create peace in the community and what the traditional rulers need to do to ensure that there is peace. Yes, there is always going to be a space for, for dialogue. There's always going to be that space for things like that. But when it gets to a level where lives are being lost, where indigents have had to flee their communities, where people can no longer go to school, then we need to actually start to put our foot down on some of all these things. The longer you continue to ignore, you, the longer you let these criminals continue to walk around the streets after committing crimes against the Nigerian state, the more of them you know, you will continue to see. And it, it, it may just never end. And it's funny how it seems the solution is just within reach. Simply arrest prosecutors. But, well, but when, when will we ever see that happen? You know, oh, hopefully um, we can bring um, the secretary um, of the Mieti Alakata Breeders Association, indigenous of the community, um, like we had today. We'll apologize that that network difficulty they didn't allow for that conversation to go on. But we still need to get the facts of this case and see how we can work together um, for a solution. Thank you very yeah. much. My name is Aneta Felix. It's been a pleasure um, conversing with you for the last two hours about you know top stories in Nigeria. It's been the breakfast on Plastic. TV Africa. Um, I'm just going to quickly say before I say my goodbyes, I remember when you spoke about the poison of farmlands, I remember sometime in Enugu when, so I used to park my car at a certain place at night because I had someone I was going to go visit. Um, <coughs> <laughs> that, stayed in a, that stayed in a kind of rough area, it's called Obiago in Enugu, so I used to park my car there at night. You know, spend the night, you know, leave in the morning. So I remember that there are certain times when I would get up, in the, get up in the morning, you know, get to my car and realize that someone has broken into my car and taken something, you know. Sometimes it's food stuff, you know, um, you know oranges, cakes, whatever, whatever I left in the car. Face caps, T-shirts, you know. This time I lost money, about 26000 So um, the, I remember there was a time that I decided I was going to buy oranges and I was going to, you know, poison. Poison. <laughs> I was going to poison the oranges and put them in the car. For whoever it is, you know, that wants to, because it happened like three times, it broke into my cup about three times. Um, so I was, I was saying I was going to put, you know, inject this oranges with rat poison. <laughs> so <laughs> whoever it is that decides that they want to break into the car again and well, you know, on, see this oranges. fresch, juicy orange. No difference, but they needed it. <laughs> I eventually Would didn't do orange? it though, but I considered it. I really did. Anyway, thanks for joining us. It's been a great Monday morning. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. See you tomorrow.